Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, young boys and girls. So today in this second free masterclass, I'm going to talk about how the stock markets of India are actually a forest. Yes, you can compare the stock markets with a forest. Okay, this masterclass will have four chapters. Okay, in the first chapter, I shall discuss about the four species of animals in this forest called the stock markets. In the second chapter, I shall discuss about how you should diversify or bifurcate your portfolio, your winning portfolio, okay, between these or among these species of animals. In the third uh, chapter, I shall discuss about how a market crash is akin to a fire in the stock, in the forest or the stock markets. Okay, so just the way the stock markets crash, similarly, there's a fire in the a forest and finally in the fourth chapter i shall talk about just like a forest okay does not develop overnight okay it takes time and the more time you give to it the denser deeper thicker okay it will be similarly wealth is not made overnight wealth is a 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 year game okay you have to be here for the long term Compounding, the magic of compounding takes place when you spend time in the markets. Learn from Mr. Warren Buffett. He spent 70 plus years in the stock markets and that's how he enjoys the benefits of compounding. Okay, so these are the four chapters we shall discuss in this class, this free master class today. Okay, let us now begin. You see the stock markets are actually a forest. Okay, now why do I call it a forest? Well, a forest typically has four species. There are carnivores. There are herbivores, there are amphibians, and there is fish. These are the four species of animals that run a forest. Similarly, in the stock markets, okay, there are the carnivores, there are the herbivores, there is fish, and there is the amphibians. Now, with the carnivores, I mean the tigers, the leopards, the um, the wolves, the cheetahs. Now, who are these carnivores? You need to identify. You see, by carnivores, I mean the market leaders. Yes, the market leaders that we have. We have 25 of them that I have identified and the ones that I follow. Now, who are these 25 market leaders? Well, let's see. You know, from the Rakesh uh, Junjunwala, late Rakesh Junjunwala to Radha Kishan Damani, to Mukul De uh, Deva Agarwal, to Mukesh Agarwal, to uh, Mr. Vijay Kedia, to Sangeeta S, to uh, Dolly Khanna, yes, here's my list. Here's my list. I have a list of these market leaders and I follow them very, very diligently and so should you. These market leaders are your carnivores. Okay, so they run the jungle. Mr. Radha Kishan Damani, Rakesh Junjunwala, Ramdev Agarwal, Mukul Agarwal, Mukul Prasad Agarwal, Mukesh Agarwal, Ashish Dhawan, Ashish Kacholia, Sunil Singhania, Anil Goel, Vijay Kedia, Dilip Lakhi, Mohish, Monish Pabri, Anuj Seth, Sanju Shah, Suresh Agarwal, Ajay Upadhyay, Sangeeta S, Girish Gulati, Dolly Khanna, Amal Parekh, Vallabh Rupchan Bansali, Ramesh, da Ramesh Damani and S.P. Tulsihan. These 25 market leaders are our tigers, our leopards, our wolves, our cheetahs in the market. Okay, you follow your leaders. All right. Then coming to the next animal in the market are the herbivores. The herbivores, you know, are the gazelles, the deers, you know, the fast running without the herbivores, the carnivores wouldn't survive. And the herbivores are these fast paced, uh, you know, uh, animals. Okay. And they run very, very fast, right? Gazelles, they run very, very fast. So now, who are these herbivores, you would ask? You see, the herbivores of the market, okay, are the trending stocks. Okay. So the trending sectors like the defense sector, the EV sector, Okay, the artificial intelligence sector, the infrastructure and ancillary uh, sector, the real estate and ancillary sector, the Ambani's, the Adani's, the Tata stocks, the renewable energy sector, the ethanol stocks, okay, uh, and other trending uh, stories and sectors like, you know, the Ram Mandir is coming up, so company stocks connected to that and similar trends, similar stories. These are the trending sectors, okay. So these, these herbivores, these gazelles, these deers, okay, who run very, very fast and give you returns of 45% upwards, okay, are these trending sectors. Now comes to the third, the third kind of an animal in the, or species rather, in the stock market, okay, who are they? Well, they are the fish, okay, so they are the blue whales, the sharks, the dolphins. Now, who are the blue whales, the sharks and the dolphins, the fish in the stock market? Well, they are all the nifty 50, the index stocks, okay, the big nifty 50 awesome stocks, 
okay the large caps nifty 50 index fund stocks are the stocks which are the blue whales the whales the sharks the dolphins of the forest okay that give you good 15 18 percent returns year on year okay and finally now the amphibians you know who are the alligators the hippopotamus okay right the the uh, uh, the crocodiles now who are these the amphibians the amphibians in the market are all those stocks that are very slow movers okay but they give great dividends they give great bonuses they give stock splits and over a period of time they make you richer they live for very 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 long you know crocodile lives for 50 80 100 years so do alligators so do these tortoises they live for 150 years Okay, they just live forever, you know, hippopotamus, okay, they're all very slow movers, you know, seen an alligator, you know, you'll feel that it's just not moving at all, it won't move for three days, and then suddenly, you know, it'll blink an eye, you've seen these hippopotamus, just, you know, slow movers, tortoises, slow movers, but they live forever, ever and ever, so who are these stocks, these are stocks that give you great dividends, great bonuses, okay, great stock splits, okay, yes, so with that, I end chapter one, which is about uh, the four species of animals that reside in this forest called the stock market. Now I move to chapter number two. In chapter number two now, we shall study how do we diversify or bifurcate our portfolio, our winning portfolio, okay, uh, in this forest called the stock market. So, well, the answer is very, very simple. Whatever your funds are, say you have a corpus of one CR to invest in the market, five CR to invest in the market, 10 lakhs to invest in the market, 100 CRs to invest in the market. Whatever your corpus is, the first rule that you follow, you would have learned in my previous master class, the 50-50 rule. What is the 50-50 rule? In the 50-50 rule, what you simply do is whatever your corpus, you divide 50% of it, you put that in an FD for the purpose of cash reserves. When do you deploy those cash reserves? Every time there's a market crash, there's a correction, there's a correction in the stock, there's a dip in the stock. That's when you use the buying bond dips, buying bond correction, buying bond crash strategy. Okay, this is a serious winner strategy, a flaw that I notice in almost every market leader as well, that everybody is 100% invested or 99% invested. Okay, when comes the crash, when comes the dips, when comes the stock correction, when comes the market correction, all those times to buy on dips, to buy on crashes, to buy on uh, corrections, you need good amount of funds and that's when you can really take advantage of the stock market. So follow the 50-50 rule to begin with, which is whatever corpus divided in 50-50 parts, 50% of it you put in an FD, okay, to deploy when the stock corrects, when the market corrects, when the stock crashes, when the market crashes and use your buying on dip strategy, okay. Now the remainder 50% you are to invest that in four parts, okay, among the different species of animals in the forest. 25% you deploy towards the carnivores, okay, which are your follow your leaders. So the tigers, the leopards, the cheetahs, Okay, the wolves, the, your market leaders, you divert 25% of your portfolio towards them. Okay, the stocks owned by them, the stocks in which they are increasing stake, the new stocks that they are buying, the common stocks that they have. You study the public portfolios of your 25 leaders. Okay, come up with your 50, 70, 80, 100 stocks and get into them, deploy 25% of your money in that. Okay, these carnivores are going to give you an average annual compounded return of 25% plus, which is great. Okay, then you move to number two. Number two, you again invest 25% of your portfolio here, okay, which are the herbivores, okay, the fast running gazelles, okay, which is what the trending sector. So the trending sectors are the EV sector, the defense sector, the real estate ancillary sector, the uh, infrastructure sector, the Tatas, the Ambani's, the Adani's, okay, the green uh, uh, fuel sector, the uh, AI uh, sector, okay, and trending news based stories sector and so on and so forth, okay, these sectors run like fast gazelles, they're going to give you 45% plus returns, okay, and they're going to be great, all right. The next, your third uh, uh, bifurcation, your 25% are going to the, the fish species in the animal kingdom or in the forest, in the stock market. The fish are the blue whales, the, the you know, dolphins, the whales, the sharks you will invest in, okay, and what are they? They are the nifty 50 stocks. The best stocks in the market, Nifty 50, they give you average compounded return of 15% plus. They are great. You know, the blue whale is awesome. So are the killer whales, the sharks, the dolphins. Okay. They, they rule the waters, the seas and the forest. Okay. And you invest in them. And the final 25% of yours goes to the amphibian species in the forest or the stock market. The amphib amphibians who live forever, but they are very slow movers. Okay. The, the alligators, the tortoise, the hippopotamus, the crocodile, you know, they will move very slowly, but the tortoise lives forever, 
150 years, right? So who are they? Well, they are these stocks, the blue chip companies, the awesome companies that move slow, but they live forever, you know, and they give you amazing bonuses, amazing dividends, okay, they're splits and whatnot. So the companies that truly make huge wealth in the long term, 30 years plus, 50 years, <coughs> like the Infosys story, the ITC story, you know, the Reliance story, okay, the Wipro story. So these are stocks, you know, if you bought 10,000 rupees worth of them in 1990 or 1970 for ITC or 1993 for Infosys or 1990 for Reliance, okay, and uh, today, you know, these stocks would make you 5 crores, 6 crores, 7 crores. Can you believe it? Okay. So these amphibians, these tortoises, these alligators, these, these crocodiles, these hippopotamus, you should invest in 25% of your portfolio in these animals. With that, we finished chapter two of this free masterclass. Now we move to chapter three. In chapter three, I talk about market crashes or fire in the forest. You see, every crash, whether it was the Harshad Mehta scam 1992 crash, okay, whether it was the dot com bubble the 1999-2000 uh, crash, whether it was the Lehman Brothers 2008 crash, whether it was Corona 2020 crash, okay, every crash that happens in the market is like a fire in the forest. Now there will be fire in the forest, it does happen every now and then and when it does happen, okay, the fire, the fire does devastate the forest. But what have you learned? Every fire that happens after a few months, four months, five months, six months, eight months, there are rains. The fire is extinguished and the forest fights back and it makes a recovery. And it makes a recovery fast and within five months, eight months, it makes new highs. It makes new densities, new greens, right? Just the way the forest comes back after the fire, there is a rain. Similarly, after every crash in the market, if you study the history of the Indian market from 1990, 1000 points to 75,000 points today, it has won 75 X times for you despite the crashes, despite the 92 Harshad Mehta scam, despite the dot com bubble scam 19, 2000, despite the Lehman Brothers 2008, despite the Corona 2020, yet the market has given you 75 X returns. It always makes a return. And one more, let me tell you, very interesting. If you study the last 30 years of the Indian stock market, you will also find that our stock markets, because our domestic consumption is also very, very good. Domestic retail investor participation is also very, very good. While the other markets may take a little longer time, Indian markets always, I repeat, always get back, okay, and gain new heights within six months, eight months max. So there may be a very dull lull period of six, eight months and you will feel, oh, stock market, loss making, oh, it's terrible, you know, I lost my shirt. But if you continue to be invested and you don't sell in a matter of six to eight months, it makes a comeback. Give it another five months and it makes greater heights from the peak that it fell from. And you're feeling bad and dull and you're feeling miserable like you're losing your shirt. But if you can stay invested, which you ought to, you must, then in six months to eight months, it will make that peak back and then give it another five, six months, it will make new peaks and make the earlier peaks look small. That's the magic of the Indian stock markets. And that's what it always does. It's meant for the long term investor who has the call to stay invested and not run when there is fire. Okay, not leave the forest. You see, when there's a fire in the forest, the, the, the animals in the forest, they may move about, but they don't leave the forest and come to your city to live with you, do they? They don't. They don't abandon the jungle. They know the rains will be back and they will be back. And it always happens. The stock markets are the same forest. If there is fire, there will be rains again. And that's the truth about the stock markets. With that, I finished chapter three of the stock market, where we are discussing how the stock market is akin to a forest and I'm giving analogies of that nature. I move to the final, the fourth chapter of this free master class in which we talk about how wealth is made for the long term. Okay, just like the forest, the forest does not build overnight. Okay, overnight, the forest doesn't just come up. The forest, more time you give to the forest, the more dense it becomes, the more large it becomes, the more deep it becomes, the more animals it has, the more animals thrive in it, okay, the more rich it becomes. <coughs> Excuse me. Similarly, the stock markets are for the long term. The more time you give to your portfolio by being invested, long term, 10 years, 30 years, 50 years, 70 years, okay, the more rich your portfolio will become, the more rich you will become, okay. So remember, stock markets is for the long term investor, the 30 year, 50 year, 70 year horizon. Okay, it is not for the trader, it is not for the FNO gambler. Okay, these people will lose money. Remember, you know, let me just share with you very interesting tip. You know, the only reason why they give you these 
calls of buy at X, say 90 rupees and sell at 110. Why they give you these selling 110 calls every time called trading? They do it. Okay, they do it. Because until you sell, the broker never makes fee. The income tax department never makes its taxes, never makes its money. If you stay invested, the broker makes no money. Okay, the income tax department makes no tax. Okay, so they will always encourage you buy this, sell this at this rate. Then again, buy, buy the same stock, sell that at that rate. Then again, you only tell me a stock that rose from 10 rupees to 13 rupees and you were asked to sell. Did it not then make 20 rupees also? Then again, you were asked to buy at 21 and sell at 29. Did it not rise to 35 later? Then again, you were asked to buy at 36 and sell at 45. Did it not cross 50 later? And did that stock not become 200 later or 500 later or 5000 later? Right? What am I saying? The stock markets to build a generational wealth, you have to invest for the long term. Okay, don't trade in the stock markets. It's only the brokers that make money in the stock markets through trading because if you will not sell, they will not make money. And the income tax department, you know, you pay a higher uh, short term capital gains tax. When you sell, if you don't sell, you don't pay any tax. You don't sell three years your stock, you don't pay any uh, gains on that, any any tax on that. Uh, and then when you eventually sell, if some stock you sell also, okay, then also there's a cap long term capital gains, which is, which is lesser than short term uh, capital gains. And you save on all that brokerage and you let compounding, you know, take effect and multiply your wealth, you know, make it, you know, from small to gigantic. So this is a very important lesson that you uh, must all learn. Wealth is made in the market for the long term. Okay. Your investor horizon should not even stop at 30 years. I see this, you know, common thing in the market. Everybody says, okay, long term, 30 years. Well, by 30 years, the real magic will start to show after 30. So at 30, if you're minting from 10 lakhs start in 30 years, if you reach 100 crores, it will be in the 40th that you'll reach 1000 crores, in the 50th you'll reach 50,000 crores. Okay, in the 60th you'll reach 100,000 crores or 1 lakh crores, in the 70th you will reach 5 lakh crores. Okay, because compounding is taking effect. So why are you, when the magic starts, why are you finishing at 30? You must invest for the long term and stay invested. And remember, once again, like I said in the earlier chapter, okay, in chapter 3, crashes are temporary. And I will end with this, crashes are temporary, after every fire in the forest there is rain. And now I'll end with my famous line, which was said by somebody else in the stock market. I thoroughly believe it, which is, Yad Vekna, Insan Hu, Chahe Stock Market, Jana Upari. I repeat in English, remember, whether it's a man or it's the stock market, both will only go up. You have a good day. Jai Hind, Jai Bhavat, Jai Shri Bhav.